the kingdom of God is established by a transformation and conversion of heart to God. Dear brothers and sisters, the central theme of Jesus' preaching and teaching is the kingdom of God. This phrase is mentioned by Jesus over 70 times in the Gospels, while in the Gospel of Matthew, the phrase kingdom of heaven is used instead of kingdom of God. About one third of Jesus' parables deal with this topic. And further, in Mark's Gospel, we see that the first thing that Jesus says when he begins his public preaching is, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the Gospel. So all in all, this must be a pretty important topic for Jesus to have spent so much of his time talking about it. So then what is the kingdom of God and why is it so important? For a moment, let's go back to the beginning of the Bible, to the book of Genesis. We see that God, after creating the world, places humans as stewards of his creation. They were to rule the earth on behalf of God and to take care of it. Humans, by being in communion with God, would be in harmony with themselves, others and the whole of creation and this would lead to them living good and holy lives by which they would accomplish the will of God for themselves and for the whole of creation. So, through the stewardship of humans, God himself would reign over the earth and creation and there would be righteousness, peace and joy in the world. But this doesn't happen. Through the scheming of Satan, human beings sin and separate themselves from God, leading to injustice, chaos and hatred. And this separation widens as sin continues to multiply. By becoming slaves to sin, humankind ultimately serves Satan and becomes slaves to Satan. As a result, it is no longer God who reigns or rules over the earth, but Satan. This is why Jesus in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 30 refers to Satan as the ruler of this world. But this is not how things end. Immediately after the fall of humans, God promises the coming of someone who will crush the head of Satan. Throughout the Old Testament, God promises the coming of a new kingdom that will never pass away and a new king through whom God himself will rule. And this king, as we see later on, is none other than Jesus Christ, who is himself both God and man. But the kingdom of God or of Jesus is different from other earthly kingdoms. Whereas earthly kingdoms are established by waging wars and forcing people to submit to displays of physical power and might, the kingdom of God is established by a transformation and conversion of heart to God. Whereas earthly kingdoms rule people from outside, the kingdom of God rules from within. In simple terms, the kingdom of God is the rule or reign of God in your heart. When Jesus Christ rules your heart and your life as king, you become a citizen of the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus says in today's gospel passage, which is taken from Luke chapter 17, the coming of the kingdom of God will not occur with signs that can be observed, nor will people say here it is or there it is, for the kingdom of God is within you. So my dear brothers and sisters, we must ask ourselves whether we truly are citizens of God's kingdom. Does God reign as supreme in our hearts? Does Jesus rule over our entire lives as king and direct all our decisions? If not, then let us surrender ourselves and our lives to him so that we may experience the effects of the kingdom of God, which we read in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, 
which are righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen.